Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Computer Science and Engineering Workshop. This is your host, Deca Adams, speaking, and welcome to the fourth part of our HTML and CSS basic series. In this video, we will be learning about some HTML input type elements, uh, and then we're going to implement some basic JavaScript um, to well to be able to do anything with them, because the thing about HTML input is that you kind of need to att attach them to something uh, because with HTML on its own you can't really do much except for um, creating a static document. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. Okay, so to create an input element in HTML we need to create an input tag. Uh, input tags don't have closing tags and uh, inside of this input tag we're gonna have to use the type attribute to define what type of input it is going to be. So on your screen right now we have six types of HTML input elements. Uh, so the main ones I want to talk about are these two. The file input, as the name suggests, allows you to give a file from your computer as an input. The password is... Well, the main difference between text and password is that password by default is... Um, what it, how's it called? Dot it. It won't show it as plain text. And the number type input is, well, as the name suggests, can only be a numeric input. So the, th so the thing is that both radio and checkbox type inputs, you need to check them. So if you've ever seen those, well, I mean, we're going to see them right after this part. But uh, basically, the main difference is that inside of a group of radio elements, I mean radio type input elements, is that you can only have one of them checked at a time. And one of them must always be checked. Meanwhile, in a group of checkbox type elements, you can have multiple or none of them be checked at a time. So in HTML, um, for text with multiple lines, uh, we're going to be using the text area element. So with input type text, you can only get a single line of text input. Meanwhile, um, with the text area element, you can have um, multiple lines of text. So when we're going to be creating a text area element, we're going to be using the calls and rows attribute. And as the name suggests, we're going to be defining the, uh, the amount of columns and rows. So let's move on. So the next type of element that I uh, that I want to talk about is a drop-down menu. So to create one, we're going to be using the select tag, and inside this select tag, we're going to have an option tag for each of the options we're going to be having inside of this drop-down menu. So inside these options, however, we need to define their values; otherwise, their values are going to be null, which is well basically undefined. So as you can see, they can be numeric, they can be just plain text. Um, so yeah, now without further ado, let's get our hands dirty in VS Code now. Okay, so before we begin, I went ahead and built the basic structure of my HTML document here. I also um, defined some CSS rules mainly to remove the, uh, the built-in white space and to um, to make the font, uh, the default font of the website to something that's bearable because to be real, uh, I find the default font unbearable. Uh, no, I'm not making a pun. I actually can't find it, can't find it bearable. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to size this real quick. I'm going to have the live preview window on the left side so you guys can actually see. What I'm doing, um, so let's start with creating a div of input box. I'm going to call it input box. I'm just going to define some basic rules for it. So width, um, wait, I did not do the, um, I did not open the class. There we go. Width of, let's call it 200 pixels. Let's just give it a height for now, um, 500 pixels. And then I want to have a background color of, um, let's go with Blanche Almond. Uh, I don't know much about this color. Oh, wait, we forgot to link the CSS file, but it's fine. We can just do it real quick. Okay, so I'm just going to make this 300 pixels because that's just way too small. And lastly, margin zero auto. 
Uh, the auto, yes, there we go. Actually, oh, we don't want it to hug the top of our web page, so 50 pixels by auto. Um, because, you know, margin works on block type elements, hence why we can use margin zero auto to, um, to center this block element. The div. So let's start with the input, text type input. Okay, let's start with the text type input real quick. And uh, actually, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and type text align center. So this text align center here, though, uh, what it's going to do is it's also going to style the, um, it's also going to center our input elements since they're inline elements. Uh, you can actually use this trick to um, center some elements that just can't be centered with margin zero auto, such as the inputs we're going to have right here. So to prove my point, I'm just going to press control S and as you can see, it is no longer centered. If we press control Z and bring it back, it is not centered. And as you can see, this is a text type inputs. We can insert some text here. So the next one that I want to talk about is, um, I believe was the text area. So the thing about a text area is that you need to define columns and rows, the amount of columns and rows that you want to have inside. So inside of this we can now have as many lines as we want. So as you can see we have 10 rows and uh, 30 columns with this one by default. Uh, we can also, you're, well, you're going to understand what these are for in a minute. Um, for now I'm just going to delete this name, we're not going to be deleting it though. I'm going to name it the text type for now because as I told you we're just going to uh, do some experimenting with some JavaScript as well. So I'm just going to call it the text area underscore text area. And oh, before I do anything else, so there's this placeholder attribute that you can use uh, to, well, insert a text placeholder. So as you can see we have in a, actually let me just expand, so as you can see we have the um, word text inside in, um, in gray, but when we type something in, it's just black, it's no longer gray. That is the placeholder we have inside. So the next one I believe I want to talk about is, um, actually let me just check real quick, oh yes, the number type of input. So number type, so the number type is basically the same thing with the text type except this time we're going to be taking numbers as input so I'm just going to get rid of this name. Uh, you will learn more about the, it in a couple minutes but uh, for now I'm just going to name it, I mean give it, give it the idea of number type. So as you can see we have these buttons here, they're built in, actually let me just increase its size a little bit, there we go. We have these buttons where we can uh, increase and decrease the value of it so it's basically the same thing as text but this time it's for the numbers. So the next element, our next input type that I want to talk about is the password type. Again, it's basically the same thing as the text type, but this time the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I'm just going to name it password type real quick and get the ID of password type not input. What's going to happen though, whatever I type in is going to be dotted, so it's not going to show what's written there, which is, well, the purpose of using a password type input. So the before I move on to checkboxes and radio types, I just want to talk about the um, file type input. So with file type inputs, we are not going to have an input field where we can write something. What we're going to have is we're going to have this button, uh, which will say um, browse by default. Um, so as you can see now, we can actually go to my uh, desktop. We can choose the, well, the PDF file that I uploaded for this um, series. So um, next. So this part, I actually want to have, um, let's see, what's next, um, what's next, ah yes, radio type. Radio type inputs, actually, you know, let me just press H1 here, radio type, actually I forgot to write inputs, inputs, and then uh, last, after this, we're going to be talking about the 
checkbox type inputs. So these two input types are all, by the way, now we can actually get rid of the um, height since we now have some stuff inside of this div. Uh, its height will no longer be zero pixels, but yeah, that's good. So for um, for so the main difference between radio type and checkbox type inputs is that so when we have a group of radio type inputs, what we want to do is we want to have um, give them the same name. So let's just name this radio. I'm seeing it with the idea of R1, and then input. Actually, you know what? Let me just copy paste this. R2, R3, R4. So now, since they contain the same name, they're a group of radio type inputs. And once you check one of them, now these are checked. So as soon as you check one of these, uh, what will happen is that you will no longer be able to uncheck that one. You can check another one, but you can never uncheck uh, the one that you just checked. Well, you see, one of these always needs to be checked so say for example when you have a let's say that you're making a survey and the user needs to at least choose one of them not at least one of them but the user needs to choose one of them and can only choose one of them so in that case you go with radio type okay so the next type of inputs i want to talk about is the checkbox type so i'm just going to go ahead and type checkbox so you don't need to uh, give these the same name so i'm just going to name this one Check one. Actually, you no, know I'm just gonna name them C1. Name them C1. There we go, much better. Mm, control C. Okay, so I wanna have four of these. I'm gonna give them different IDs. And lastly, uh, I'm gonna change I'm not gonna change the name just yet. So as you can see, we can choose multiple in the same group, or what we can do is uh, well, what we can do is we can just choose one of them at a time, or two of them, or none of them. So this is basically the main difference between these. So I'm just going to change their names to um, C, well, a different C, because I want to talk about, before I move on, I just want to talk about labels real quick. So this for attribute inside of this label tag uh, is, well, it's basically to the, um, it's, we use it to tell the document which element that it is for. So say for an example, check one. So this is this label here is for check one. So you don't need to click on the uh, checkbox itself. You can just click on the label. I think you should be good to go. So the actually before I wanna before I do anything else, I'm just gonna give these each of their own labels to show you guys something. Um, so um, what I'm gonna do is actually let me just do this real quick. So this is going to be C2, this is going to be C3, this is going to be C4, check 4, there we go. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you guys is, it's not exactly about the input types in HTML, but what it is about is, um, is styling them. So input box, input, brackets, type equals, check box. So when I say this, uh, what I'm actually telling my CSS document is that I'm going to style the checkbox type inputs in my input box div, which are, well, basically these. So actually, hold on, maybe I should have done that, mind. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to say display none. And as you can see now, the boxes themselves um, are not visible now. So but to be able to tell whether they're visible or not. I mean, whether they're checked or not, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna come here and say input type equals checkbox. And then a font weight. I just want the text to be bolder when they're checked. So let's see now, check is working. No, because we forgot. Um, no, wait, we didn't actually do. Oh my God, I forgot to, <laughs> my bad, my bad. So. Let me just fix this real quick. So plus label. So what I'm doing here is uh, what this plus sign means is that for every label that comes after the every single um, checkbox type input within the input box, I'm giving this style. So let's just say uh, font weight bolder. And as you can see, the font is now bolder, but this is not exactly what we want to do. No, no, no. 
So you're going to be learning about more about um, pseudo classes in the future episodes, but what we're just going to say is now checked. So when it's checked, the font will be bolder. So let's go ahead and try it out. And as you can see, they're now checked. And actually, let to, um, to be able to make you see it better, let's just add it a background color. Let's make it brown. And as you can see, the text becomes bolder. And it also is um, now, well, the background is now uh, brown. I'm not in that show, it's brown, but whatever. So the next type of inputs, I believe, that I want to talk about. Well, I mean, it's not exactly inputs, uh, but it still can be used to receive inputs. So uh, basically, next thing we're going to be talking about are the drop down menus. So I'm just going to come here and type drop down menu. So the a drop-down menu is basically a bunch of option tags within a um, within a what's it called a select tag. I'm just gonna get rid of the name select. I'm just gonna give the idea of drop. So inside of this, uh, th by the way, if you don't know what a drop-down menu is, this is basically it. So you should have seen one of these on the internet. It's just maybe you didn't know what they're called. So we're just gonna have option tags. So they will need to have values. So let's just call this option all option one. So the value can be numerical. Um, it can be a number. It can be a text. You know, for option two, let's call it. Um, let's just have another option that says it can be text within um, within some numbers. I mean, it's not exactly called text. It's um, it's a string what's inside but um, basically this is what is a um, drop-down menu and um, this is basically how you create them so in the future episodes uh, I believe in the next episode we will be um, learning how to properly style these uh, but for now I just want to add some basic JavaScript to well play around with them a bit so script type equals um, equals text slash JavaScript. I'm just going to add some basic JavaScript. Oh, and lastly, I want to talk about the button type. I'm just going to add the break tag here too. So actually, you know, let me just remove it and then show you guys this. So I'm just going to call it button. The button is here now, but uh, what I want to happen is I don't want them um, side by side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use the break tag and then have this appear below. So inside of this tag, uh, what I want to do is I want to have this... Uh, actually, you know, let's just use the um, display div. Um, let's just have a header. I'm going to give it the ID of display. And uh, I'm just going to type display here as some placeholder text for now. So inside of this, I want to have a function. And uh, let's just call it display inputs because that's basically what it's going to do. So what I want this function to do is to just um, display the value that is received by these um, inputs. So let's just play around a bit with the text. So document, uh, which is the web document that we have in front of us, dot get element by ID. We're going to be accessing the, um, the element using its ID. That is actually why we need these IDs. So um, let's just try the text value. No, wait, actually, actually, no, you know what? Okay, so I may have done a bit of a mistake here, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to copy this. Pull this a line below. So inside, what I want to have is I'm just going to use the display tag. And then we're going to access the inner HTML of this display element, um, the element that contains the ID of display. So what we're just going to say is um, we're basically going to insert the um, the value of the elements that we have here into here so well let's save it and then try again what's going on why is it not showing anything mm, this is interesting maybe we should just um why is it not showing anything um, maybe we did a typo or somewhere mm, get element by id Value. I mean, oh, we 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 forgot to. <laughs> my bad. My bad. We we need to type on click. Uh, display. <laughs> display inputs. 
that is really my bad I'm so sorry about it um, button and as you can see the input is now displayed here so let's just one two three so let's try it with the number type as well so uh, in the number type this is well I mean this is input that we have so is it gonna work with text no because this is a number type so let's just go ahead and type you know 1453 it's just a random number and as you can see it displays it so for a drop down menu though what will happen is well let me just show it to you guys real quick so it will pick the value of uh, whatever is selected at the time so if we choose option one it's going to be one if we choose the option two it's just going to print out text if we choose the option three it's going to be printing text one two three and uh, it's mostly the same so uh for the i just want to show the password type as well real quick just to Oh, it doesn't really have a actual purpose anymore, but still, I just want to show something. So I'm just going to type in 1, 2, 3, 4, turtles. I hope I didn't do a typo. Ah, there we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, turtles. I mean, not turtle, turtles. Uh, I bad over there. So uh, basically, these are the uh, main input type elements, um, input types that you want to know in HTML. Uh, obviously, there's a there's a lot more. Um, you can actually check check out some of them by uh, experimenting in the S code. So if you just type um, inputs, you're gonna see more. I'll say for example, there's a month type input. There's a past radio type. No, wait, we talked about it. There's the submit type input. Um, what else? We have URL types. Uh, if you you know spend some time in VS Code, you can actually learn more about these. Uh, I'll say for example, let's just go with date time and see what it looks like so why uh, is it displayed is, is it being displayed uh, i can't see it oh wait where is it oh, i can't see is it is it here interesting why is it not showing me wait did i do it right actually you know what let's just write a date type real quick okay so with date type this is actually what's happening but uh so you can just you know go ahead and choose a, a date so June, um, we, we didn't choose a day. So 10th of June, 2037. So these, these are just to name a few. You can learn more about them uh, by, well, either reading about them or experimenting in VS Code. But this is it for today's video. So uh, if you guys found the video educational, helpful, or you know useful by any means, uh, I hope you did. Make sure to like and subscribe, it helps a lot. Uh, so thank you guys for much watching, uh, see you guys next time.